Today we're going to be looking at some big snakes here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Stay tuned. What's up snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily and we're going to be pulling out one of my big Burmese pythons today. Giving him a little stretch his legs out there that he doesn't have. The legs that he doesn't have. His vestigial legs we're going to be stretching out. The ones that he used to have millions and millions of years ago that fell off and are no longer useful. Now, we're going to be looking at berms. I want to bring my anaconda out, but I think she's in shed. So we're going to have to take a look and see how she looks. And then we'll be looking at some ball pythons and some boas and stuff around the room that kind of makes me smile on this beautiful Monday. Stay tuned. <laughs> For a male berm, he's pretty big, this guy. Oh. Okay. Where are you going? Oh, he's squeezing me. If I, get, if I get trapped, you're gonna have to free me. Drop the phone. <laughs> no, remember, I gotta record. Did you see him squeeze my neck? Hey, remember, I gotta record. You're recording. Don't, don't save you. Yeah, don't stop, don't save you. <laughs> oh, it's terrible lighting. I've uh, been recording this whole time. Oh, you are. <laughs> See what we're trying to do? We're trying to film this snake and he's trying let me, to Let me step out. out. Let me step out oh, and you yeah, stay yeah, on this yeah, side. Right, right, this is called trying to film a big snake. The challenge is involved. This is my, look at, look, would you, see, would you look at him? He is giving me, I have a big neck, thank God, because he's real, like, I mean, I'm talking like a real tight squeeze here. Albino, green, granite, hypo also known as a pearl green granite. This is a male I produced a number of years ago. And um, we had, I think we had a contest to name him. I don't know what the name was. Someone gave me a name. I didn't really like it though, but um, we still haven't named him. So guys, come up with a good name. This guy has got a lot of beef on him here. Usually, you know, the females are big. This guy has a lot of size and we don't really even feed him that much. He gets a, what, a jumbo rat maybe every other week. And he's just got a nice size once again. Great display animal. I'd love to put him in a nice big cage at some point. He, um, cause he's so beautiful. I mean, look at that. No pattern. That's the green gene in here. It's patternless. He's got the red eyes cause he's albino. He's light cause he's hypo. And uh, you're not gonna even see the granite really. I can see a little bit of the granite pattern, but you're not gonna really see that cause the green kind of erases that. But so he's, he's definitely a genetic freak as we say in bodybuilding. And he's very strong because he's trying to choke my neck, so. <laughs> but he's a sweetheart, even though he's trying to choke my neck and he's got a nice grab around my leg. He's, this is how he should be holding on. I could literally go and clean snake cages now and he wouldn't even let go. And that's because he knows. He's like, look, I want to hang out, but I want to also feel secure uh, holding on to my, uh, my daddy here. And that's what having a big muscular snake's all about, right? You, you know, and that's why berms are so good because they have such good personalities. You don't have to worry about the biting in the face. You know, you don't have to worry about anything. They're pretty, you know, and, and you see as he's kind of been out of the cage for a couple minutes, now he's even getting even more mellow now because now he's like, all right, I don't, now I really don't want to go back in the cage. Now he's going to be mad if I have to put it back in. Now he's like happy. He's out. And they just have, berms have just really good personalities. I think he has a little bit of a nose rub here. I don't know if he was rubbing his nose on anything. Probably. Yeah. Put a little antibiotic cream on that. This guy would be great. See, I'd love to put these guys outside, but obviously I can't, number one, because of my permit. But number two, they would get, it's funny because I would be afraid to put a berm outside because of respiratory infection. Meanwhile, there's berms living in the Everglades, right? But these things, you know, they, they like warm, humid, and it does get cold here. I don't, I, to be honest with you, I don't know how these Burmese pythons live in the Everglades. I, I just don't, because they, they get sick easy, you know? But in my snake room, with the high humidity here in Florida, Berms thrive. All my berms, I don't want to, I don't want to jinx myself, but you can ask Pablo. We've had zero respiratories in Burmese pythons ever here. They just really like the, the temperature, you know, that we keep it at here. They thermoregulate themselves. If they want to warm up, they go to the warm side of the cage. If they want to, you know, stay cool, they stay on the cool side. Sometimes they're on one, sometimes they're on the other. They kind of do their own thing. Like I said, our humidity is pretty good here all the time. It never gets really, really dry where they, you know, that's a lot of times what can cause respiratory too. It's almost like they're too dry and it like, almost like makes it hard for them to breathe. Berms like to have humidity in the air that they're breathing. So once again, if you guys are living in a state where you can have a Burmese python, 
I don't recommend having a hundred of them. <laughs> it's a lot of work, they're big snakes. But if you can have a couple of them, just as a pet even, even if you want to breed a pair of them, they, they are, I'm telling you, they, they give a lot of pleasure. They're, they're a great snake to show off to your friends, the whole, you don't have to worry about them necessarily, you know, biting people and because they do have a really good temperament. The albinos seem to be much more calm than all the other morphs. That's just my experience with them. I think Pablo will tell you the same thing. It seems like the albinos are just like real, real chill. People mm -hmm. think it's because they don't see as well. I don't think so. I don't know. I just think it's it's like they're more domesticated or something like that. The al You know, because the albinos all came from, you know, one snake basically, that, or, or two, three snakes that Tom Crutchfield imported years and years and years ago from uh, Thailand or whatever. So it's the same, one snake, you know, if that snake had a good personality, then all, pretty much all the babies are gonna have the same personality. It's, it's a genetically inherited thing. It's like some snakes, if they're good eaters, it seems like their children become good eaters. You have a parent with a, that's a bad eater, sometimes the, 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 the kids are bad eaters. I don't know what, what it is, but I guess it's behavioral. As I get older, I start to realize that I'm becoming more and more like my dad. <laughs> I have the same habits as him. So maybe there's a component, a genetic component to it. But anyway, wanted to show off uh, this nice big snake. I was gonna take my anaconda out today too, but you know what, she's in shed. Hopefully, when, after she sheds later in the week, we'll bring her out as well. All right, let's go take a look and see some more snakes. All right, since we're showing Burmese pythons off and we couldn't bring out the anaconda, we're gonna bring out this, this beautiful girl. That last one was a boy. This is a girl. This is a super hypo. So it's a leucistic. This is a black-eyed leucistic berm. And it's definitely granite as well because everything I produce is granite from that, that litter. It could be green. We don't know because the super hypos are also patternless. So it could be green. It's uh, definitely 100% albino. And because both pair, actually probably 66% held up. And you know, this type of a snake if you're into white snakes, which I am, of course, you know, it doesn't matter what are the genes there, right? Because the leucistic aspect of it wipes everything clean. Leucistic means it has a lack of pigments. So there's no pigments. Even though there's a little yellow, well, I always find these black-eyed leucistics, even in boas, they have a little bit of yellow in them. I don't know what, what, what that's about, but they do. And they don't have, you would think they wouldn't have, they would have red eyes because they don't have any pigment, but they do have black eyes usually. Now, sometimes when um, you take a leucistic like this with black eyes and you add like a T-negative albino, it's always gonna turn the eyes red. But if you do a T-positive albino with, with the hypogene, sometimes it could, they give them a little tinge of red. You know, sometimes you might even get a blue eye out of that because if you take away some of the black, you can sometimes get a blue eye. So it's weird because in berms, the super hypos back in the day when they first came out, they were both black eyes and blue-eyed leucistics. I don't know why they had both, but the blue-eyed leucistics seems to have disappeared. My friend Tom Regan, he, uh, was breeding them back then. He said that the all the super hypos back then and the original ones were all blue-eyed leucistics. And I don't know why we only have black eyes now. It's kind of weird. I wonder if there was another gene in those that was lightening up the the eye color. You know, it could have been like some kind of hypo gene in there or T-positive that no one really knew about that was in there. But it's pretty weird that there were super hypos that were blue eyes and now there are none. They're all black eyed ones. But She's getting some good size in her. I think we're gonna to have to move her up to a bigger cage now. It's probably time. Um, she's starting to get the cool muscle feel to her. She's about, where's she? I think she's two years old now. She's, yeah, I think she's two years old. So that's usually when they start adding some good girth. And that's when I usually start feeding them a little he more heavily and they kind of get cool. But you can see, great personality. And we don't even handle, we don't, to be honest, we don't handle her that much, but they're just berms that just have really cool personality, especially when they get bigger. I think it's funny because you would think they get scary when they get bigger, but if you breed them and they're in your facility, they seem as they get older, they just get become more confident in themselves. And, you know, we, we handle them because we have to, you know, clean their cages and stuff like that. So they're definitely getting, you know, handle time, but I can hold the snake once a month and it's still going to be just as good as if I handled it every day. So, but once again, great pet, you know, as long as you don't have really, really small kids, because, you know, sometimes, you know, obviously you don't want a big snake around a little kid's neck. But if you're looking for something that's kind of like uh, something you can take out and show your friends, that's also not going to be too dangerous, um, try out a burn. All right, Pablo noticed this. Uh, I showed you my super fire diamond female with my fire diamond male the other day. And I showed you that the female looked like she was ovulating. She's got a huge lump in her and she hasn't really eaten at all. But, and usually when they ovulate, that's it. Usually they're either pregnant or not. These guys are locked. That's weird, Bob. 
I don't know. Maybe she wasn't ovulating. Maybe it's like a pre-ovulation something or another. I don't know. She looks really big. <laughs> she looks like she's grabbing, actually. And obviously, she's uh, they're still they're still breeding. Maybe they just like each other. Maybe they're doing it for pleasure. <laughs> Pretty cool, though. Looks like a zoom in on this thing. Yeah, I wasn't sure, but it definitely certainly looks like a lock to me, too. Yeah, Bob, you're right. All right, here's my albino caramel or caramel albino. I, I think it's got the caramel G1 copy, which is an incomplete dominant in carpet pythons. And one copy of albino for sure, obviously. It's an albino. And it's 66% het moongla or 66% het azanthic. So, I've been growing this girl up for a couple of years now. She's going to a bigger cage now. We can put her in a little bit more room to move around as opposed to a little, little tub. She should really enjoy herself now more in here. And she'll be one of my future breeders, obviously. There she goes. I'll tell you something, these animal plastics cages, I, I'm not thrilled with them. I'm not in love with them. I should have gotten black. White is really, really hard to, to keep looking clean. I mean, Pablo disinfected this cage like for a half hour and it's really, really clean. But you can see there's just stuff that just doesn't come off there. It's because it's white. And uh, that's maybe the disadvantage. They look great when they're new. And they look great even from a distance. Like they look pretty cool. When you see a stack of them, they look really nice. But they get they get dirty. There's no way to clean them really. I mean, you can disinfect them so there's no bacteria in them. But they're never going to look like Snow White. I should have known better. They just look so good. I remember Ben Rennick. May you rest in peace. He had a lot of animal plastics. I used to see them there, and I was like, wow, I gotta get those animal plastics. And they're pretty affordable, too. It's a good, I mean, other than that, it's a good cage. It's just, don't get white. Stick with black. All right, she's uh, she's chilling out. I got the ones with the shelves, too. These, they're filthy, but I can't get, I cannot get them to stay like clean, clean. All right, I showed you this carpet python the other day, my double head snow. It's breeding with my snow, and she's shedding. Look at that. Very rarely do you catch a snake mid-shed. So I had to start filming, of course. Cage is a little messy, but that's what happens when you shed. They poop and pee, and there goes that shed. Beautiful, clean skin under there. Look at that. There's my snow on top of her. It's my visual snow. That's an albino azanthic. Female is a double head albino azanthic. And that could this could be her pre-lay shed, hopefully. I hope she's... Uh, Gravid. That would mean in 30 days we'll see eggs. Hopefully. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? It's always cool to see a big snake shedding. Let's see if we can zoom in here a little bit. There we go. She's just like crawling right out of her skin. Nice. That's what we want to see. We want to see a snake crawling right out of her skin. Whoa, that's my intro right there. Yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. Gotta say. Look at how it's twisting as she's, uh, as she's pulling out of it. Will she get the whole thing off? It's like, you can't resist watching a a snake shedding, it's like popping a pimple. It's like something you just fascinated to watch. I think she got it all off. Oh, she's a little bit left there. Just a tiny bit. And I'm sure that'll come off. Then she'll leave that nice snake. See that? They always, oh, oh I thought that was poops. That's not poops. A lot of times they poop in the actual shed as they're shedding it off. Uh, all right, I'll leave these guys alone. I don't want to bother them too much. All right, our corn steaks are growing. Pablo has them on the accelerated eating plan, and they're definitely getting big. This is our Tessera Blood Red uh, Amel, which is also just an albino. And it's, I guess, a het for uh, peach lavender. I don't know what that is. I haven't seen those. But once again, very cool. 
blood red albinos. I mean, this if we had this color in like a ball python, it would be really worth a million dollars, <laughs> right? Yeah. And there are a dime a dozen in, in, in corn snakes. Yeah, but she's what is she eating now, Pop? Big mice? Yeah, she's eating adult mice. Yeah, that's pretty good. Once she's up to like a small rat or something like that, I think she'll be ready to breed probably by next season. Oh, they'll be ready next season. I do like these guys. I don't like it. I don't need. I don't need a hundred of these things, but I, I like to have a couple of them. I want really want to put these guys in like display cages. I think that they're uh, they're cool enough with their coloration. It's amazing to think that these things could be in my backyard too. Although I've yet to find. A, I know you found a corn snake. I, I never find corn snakes in my house. Black racers, yes, not corn snakes. Wow, this one got big too. Pop, this one you've been feeding really well. This is also blood red. This is pied sided. And the pie side, and I've shown you this before, they have the uh, the white on the side, so it's like a pie, but rather than having the, like the ball python pie breaking it up, it, it creeps up the side. And I think people are basically breeding for more white, you know, to see if they can get more of that white to creep up the side. Let me see if I can lift her up so I can show you. Yeah, they have like white on the sides and on the bottom. That's what pied is in corn snakes. It's a little different than a ball pythons. I think the ball python pies are pretty much the coolest, right? I mean, I would say like the Burmese python pies are really cool too, but I think that the Burma ones are better. Yeah, so let's take a look and see if we can see some more white on this this beauty. Yeah, you see how it, you see that white? It looks like someone took a, a paintbrush, and that that's really cool. Now, I, you know, once again, I, I'm not a, a corn snake breeder, although I'm going to breed this eventually. But I'm definitely looking to get more white. If I'm going to do these, I'm going to definitely try to get as much white as possible. See that? That looks really cool. If we can get more white up the sides. I know a lot of people have gotten selectively bred these things and gotten a lot of a lot more white to show in these things. But you got to be in the project to make it better, right? So we're in the project. This, this girl will definitely breed next year. She's big. All right. Hold on. Look at this guy. I want, this is my male. Look, I want to show you his tail. He's shaking it like a rattlesnake. Look at that. See, they mimic rattlesnakes because they know in nature, if a predator hears that little rattling sound, that they're going to get scared and think that they're poisonous or venomous and stay away from them. Pretty cool little adaptation. Who says snakes aren't smart? That's definitely pretty smart, if you ask me. <laughs> I'm a rattlesnake, stay away from me. I'm gonna bite you and you're gonna die. <laughs> this male is a uh, mandarin blood red, so it's basically an albino blood red. So we can produce more mandarin or blood red uh, albinos. There's my second pair of olive pythons, my little guys. They're out, the sun's out, they're trying to catch them some rays. They really do love to bask. It, it, it makes me feel good when I see them basking too. And this cage is kind of like at a weird angle. Like this first cage gets all the light. And the second cage, you have to kind of, the snakes have to kind of angle themselves to this corner right here if they want to get some light and some sunlight. And it's usually, it's like 5.30 already. So they're, it's, it's pretty late in the day, but they're coming out for their sunlight, which tells you they love to bask these guys. So that's my female, the head albino. And then the male is my um, albino, olive python. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. We got to see a little bit of Bolins. We got to see a little bit of corn snakes. We got some Boas. We got some ball python. I gave you everything. I even gave you a little olive python taste of the outdoor enclosure. What I'm really excited about is my friend Chase Anderson is building me a two more outdoor enclosures. One going to be for my diamond pythons that I'm going to go cohabitate out there. And eventually another one will be for a Boland's Python too. So pretty excited about that. That will be a future project that I will show you once uh, Chase gets underway with that. And uh, we're in the heart of the breeding season. So we got a lot of breeding going on here. We got boas locked up. I got, I got some boas tomorrow. I'll show you some boas that I think are actually, you know, sitting on the hot spot and are gravid and we're, we're holding babies in them. And we're count, countdown has begun. So I think we're gonna get a bunch of boa litters this year. Last year we got a, we got about five bow litters, which you know is okay. But I, I bred a lot more than we got this year. For some reason, I think we're gonna we're gonna get the ones that we missed on last year. So I don't know if the males were too young or the females were too young or what the play 
what the deal was. But I think we're going to see a lot more today. So or we're going to see a lot more this year. So that's exciting. We got some ball. I think we have some ball pythons that are going to probably be laying in the next couple of weeks, too. Uh, the ones that we started breeding at the end of last year that are going to kind of be late bloomers this year. We have one female that delivered in January from last year. I, I would thought I was going to see a clutch from her in January, but we're into February, so we might see one in the next week or two as well. So we'll keep an eye on her. And uh, breeding season goes on and on, as we say. And uh, we're going to hopefully get some green tree pythons to eat tomorrow. Papa's bringing in some pinkies. We're going to be scenting them with a little bit of uh, chick fuzz, chick down, and see if that works. And I'll try to video that as well. So. Hope you like what you've seen. If you are, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.